Are you fired up to take back your government? Are you prepared to take back the greatness of the American dream? Are you ready to be patriotic, historic, and victorious for the sake of future Americans? That's good. As a matter of fact, that's more than good. That's absolutely fantastic. Thank you for having me here today at the Patriot Field of Dreams. And before I get started, let me say a few quick thank yous for being here in the Show Me State. First, I want to say thank you to Ms. Kim Paris for all the work that she has done in organizing this event with the committee and for getting me down here today. Thank you, Kim. I also want to say thank you to the leadership and all the members of MoveOnUp.org. Thank you very much, Chris Ops. Thank you, Davis, and thanks for having me here. I also want to say thanks to all the grassroots organizations that are here today, including my friend over there, Linda, from Americans for Prosperity. Thank you very much for what you do around the nation. I also want to thank all the wonderful patriots here in the land where they sometimes say Missouri and sometimes say Missouri, but I'm glad to be here in the Show Me State. Thank you for befriending me and taking care of me while I was here. I speak to you today from what the Rally for Common Sense has named and deemed the Arena for Ideas stage. This is the place where we are supposed to, as speakers, push we the people that are gathered here today. We're asked to push you and push ourselves intellectually, instructionally, and interactively from this stage. We are asked as speakers to not only rally fellow conservatives to make a change that we actually can believe in at the ballot box, it's more than just about November. We are asked from this stage today, and we are asking you as fellow patriots from today onward to challenge ourselves and to challenge those around you to commit to a political change that goes back to liberty, goes back to sensible government, that goes back to statesmanship in politics, and goes back to an era of American exceptionalism for 2012 and for many years to come. Thank you. As we celebrate our common commitment to our future as a nation and our impending victories in government as conservatives, I want to share with you just for one moment a personal celebration that I'm having today as well that extols the values of conservatism. It was exactly 10 years ago today that I embraced the essence of this pursuit of happiness that was endeared by our founding fathers and captured in the words of the Declaration of Independence, that literary spark that gave rise to the brightest and boldest nation that has ever illuminated the skies of history. See, against what bureaucrats said, against what statistics predicted, against what my family background provided, and against what socioeconomic status is afforded, conservative principles overcame progressivism and melancholy. An unmarried African-American father raising two young children under his own roof, post-divorce and post-9-11, fighting as his own attorney against the wiles of the court systems, fighting against the social and bureaucratic struggles that usually asphyxiate black children's hopes and dreams with broken homes and broken promises. That American walked his two state children, ages eight and two, across his college stage and picked up his college degree after nearly a decade and a half of trying to get a degree. After dropping out of college, after taking care of sick parents, after working as a deli clerk and as a janitor to support my family, all while chasing the dream of a better life because of the opportunities provided by the American dream. Now that was possible for my family and for my children and my grandchildren because conservative principles and the ability to pursue happiness and the American dream are still possible here in this great nation due to our time-tested values that we hold dear as conservatives. As long as conservatives such as us are gathered here today to protect the true essence of the American dream and the foundation of that dream, which is our bold, beautiful federal constitution, these stories will continue today and every day around the country. And with these stories come the promise of the comeback of the American people. 
With these stories come the solutions we need for a stronger America instead of more promises coming from four more years from a nope and cringe president or a budgetless do-little Senate. Today we are asked to do more than just bolster our patriotism through the honor of gathering here at this noble rally. We are asked to be intellectual with our debates as we convince our wayward countrymen that we must love this nation and therefore we must change the course from this destructive path that we are on right now. We are asked to be instructional with our rhetoric so that we not only fire up this crowd here today, we must also build a fire that warms up younger generations today and future generations of Americans in the days ahead. To succeed, our fiery passion must warm up future generations of Americans to conservative values, conservative leadership, and patriotic service in the halls of government. We are asked to be interactive with our words, with our actions, with our love for you as children of God, and with our love for each other as fellow Americans. We must do these things if the fire that we are building today is to become the zeal necessary to blaze a new path of greatness for the melting pot of America in the 21st century. We know that our diverse, talented, and expansive nation cannot triumph past these financial crises that we are having if we continue to count on big government to provide its version of what leadership is and what its vision for success is, which we've already seen for decades. Big government has never been able to provide these things effectively. Let me ask you a few questions. Has big government fixed our struggling educational systems throughout the nation that our children are impacted by today? Has big government spending capped the heights of unemployment nationally at 8% as we were told with this monstrosity of a stimulus package three years ago? We need smaller government and bigger people in America to elevate American exceptionalism once again. We need a historical sense of the appropriate roles of government, family, education, economic liberty, and multilateral prosperity in these United States today. We need to push away politicians that seek to be popular for all of the wrong reasons and promote Americans that choose to be historic by serving us all for all the right reasons. Therefore, the purpose of my talk with you today is not just to fire you up with talking points or television-ready sound bites. See, all of the speakers up here can remind you of just who you are. It's simple. You all, you all are the we the people that America is begging to return to leadership in this nation of crisis today. of us can remind you of the people that need you, that need you to be historic and need you to be humble servant leaders in whatever way you can starting today. All of you, all of us, we are the true last great hope for the huddled masses yearning to breathe free, away from the oppression of status quo aesthetics and away from the hopelessness of unresponsive and bloated government. All of us can articulate whether it's with a preacher's passion or a politician's eloquence, the power of your presence here today at the Patriot Field of Dreams. You all, you all are the humble points of light that illuminate this field of dreams with a residence of your potential. You have awakened a sleeping people and invigorated an apathetic nation to remember who we are, what we do as Americans, and why we must go forth from here as patriots. We are the United States of America. We lead as the greatest source of economic, military, and altruistic good that the world has ever seen. Embrace American conservatism. Embrace the greatness that is in within you. Embrace the American dream and extol it in your everyday lives. Embrace conservatism and seize the day starting today. Thank you for this opportunity to speak with you. God bless this picture, Field of Dreams, and God bless the United States of America. Thank you, folks.